TV. We're here at the Old Bakery Studios in Truro. We've got with us today the Resna and they're going to be performing for us. Wouldn't you like to know? Tomkinson. She's done incredibly well recently with her latest single, Topping Charts, and she's also lovely. So, hello. <laughs> How have you been? How's lockdown been? How are you feeling? Lockdown for me, um, I think obviously it's been terrible for everyone, especially musicians. You know, we've lost festivals and gigs and um, lots of opportunities, but personally, I've um, been really busy. I've got a lot of things to announce, and there's a lot of things I've been doing behind the scenes. Um, but kind of just getting everything ready for when life goes back to normal, I can like hit the ground running. A few questions, okay. that's my that's my job. Um, what artists mainly inspire your writing, and who do you who do you like aspire to be like? Oh God, I, there's lots of different artists. So I love Carol King. She is my favourite writer. She's fantastic. Um, her album Tapestry is massively influential to me. Um, I love Bruce Springsteen. I love Billy Joel. Um, I love Guns N' Roses, Aerosmith, The Eagles. I just love music. Yeah. I'm just a massive fan. I think I tend to listen to a lot of music from like the 70s and the 80s uh, kind of era. Um, but then again, my favourite band uh, is Weezer. Um, I think I'm like influenced by the narrative more than anything. So artists that are writers, I guess. How do you? Well, how did you feel when your latest single? did so well in the iTunes charts. Like, tell us a bit about that. Thank you, yeah, that was mad. That was just really mad. Um, so when it got to the number one on the country charts, that was really cool, because I've never gotten a number one before on the country charts. I always got, like, number, I think I got to number two once. And I was like, oh, please get there, please get there, but I never did. Um, and so this was, like, really big to get to number one finally. Um, but I've got amazing support, you know. Um, I'm so grateful, it's not something you can just do by yourself, it's you know, other people buying your song. Um, 
And yeah, the music video charts uh, was, what was it? Kylie and Miley got to number one, next Kylie and Miley, which is awesome. You know, growing up, I loved Hannah Montana, as yeah. you probably did yeah, as well. So being like right next to her on the iTunes music video chart was massive. If you had to pick your top three artists to be on a festival lineup alongside, who would they be? This is so hard. Um, I would love to be alongside, I love Maggie Rogers. I think she's awesome. Absolutely same, she's I like, love her. She's like so different as well, do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, no one's quite like her. I think she's great. Um, Maybe some like classics like like Carol King or Springsteen. Um, I think Sam Fender's really cool. Yeah. Uh, he's doing really, really great, really great stuff. There's so many people, you know what I mean? It's like I was going to be playing Board Masters this summer and there were some really awesome people on there like Bieber Doobie was playing. Yeah. She's doing amazing at the moment. And it just would have been awesome. But hopefully next year all the festivals are back. I really hope so. I've missed it a lot. I really want to get back. And I, when I saw saw the Boardmasters line up, I was like, oh, there's so many amazing bands coming to the Southwest. And it was so exciting. And then it was like, oh, OK, yeah. maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> we will see. But anyway, thank you so much for chatting to me. It's been pretty lifeless since you've been gone So met a few guys But you said the bar too high Cause it's you, it's always been you
I'm now here with arts legend. He knows everything about music and performance and theatre and comedy. He's a chief reporter at the Cornwall Live. It's Lee Trujillo. Hello. Hello. All right. I'm good, how are you? Yeah, I'm very good, thank like, you. Like, how do you have enough time to do so much? You must oh, you have to research everything. You never, you never really have enough time, really, yeah. but you make time, you know, when you're passionate about it. And I've never really seen it as a job, really, because yeah. it's just what I'm into, you know. It's, it's been an honour doing what I do in Cornwall because yeah. we've, we've had, I've seen the growth of festivals down here, because, of course, when I started, there wasn't anything like that, really. And now it's probably the best county in the whole of the country for, for festivals from Board Masters to Leo Palooza and everything in between, you know. And to see the growth of that has been remarkable, really. And um, yeah, and just seeing some amazing, because of course when I started, and when I was a teenager before I was doing what I'm doing now, we had the Cornwall Coliseum, which was one of the most amazing legendary venues in the country, if not Europe, really. And everybody played there, everybody played there. And to, to see gigs there as a, as a young kid was just amazing. And that gave me my love of music, which is my great passion, really. And so gone through the rave years, which, you know, just when I started was the sort of, sort of height of that. And of course, Cornwall really was at the cusp of the whole dance genre. But then I've always been really into sort of guitars and noisy boys, basically. <laughs> like, I think there was a golden period in the sort of mid to late noughties of bands like um, Marvin and the Gays, who became I Say Marvin, uh, My Elvis Blackout, Rosie and the Goldbug, Glass Shark, all these bands which were all on the cusp of great things. And of course now, we're still doing it with the Resna, who are just warming up just now over there, and, um, and the Velvet Hands and groups like that. You know, every, every few years, there's a sort of glut of bands and songwriters, singer-songwriters, etc who come from Cornwall, who are really exciting. You know, we do, we do breed people that are special down here and that are quite unique as well, because we're away from those sort of fields of influence, I think. Brilliant moments that I've been sort of the part of, like I danced on stages. Remember when the Flaming Lips used to get people to yeah. dance in costumes with them. So I, I managed to dance as a bulldog with them up at Plymouth Pavilions, which oh, was amazing. an amazing experience. And then you have the reverse of that, where I got a, a lawyer's letter from Oasis like a cease and desist letter to, to say stop writing about them and stuff because I did this feature about them when they were recording at Sawmill Studio near Foy and um, did this big feature with these photographs of them sort of off duty, you know, just relaxing, not being the bad boys and everybody was saying, oh, they're lovely boys really. The next minute it was a lawyer's letter saying don't feature this article again or we'll use these photographs again. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. That's all right. I have one final question. What is the elite of elite of pasty flavours that you've grown up <laughs> eating in Cornwall? Go. It's got to be traditional, isn't it? You can't oh, be. That was a you can't, I know it's boring, isn't it? Um, yeah, traditional one. Although I did, I went. You can't mention them when you're in Cornwall. I know. I'm sorry, people of Cornwall, but I went to <laughs> and they let me make my own Lee Trewheeler pasty oh, with, their, with their chef, <laughs> and I did a stargazy pie. Uh, pie pasty, you know, with a mackerel with its head coming out of the pasty, it was bloody revolting. <laughs> Hi, my name's Helm. Uh, this is a song I wrote for my wife before we got married, and then I got to sing it to her at our wedding. It's called Falling in Love. I hope you enjoy it. I think I'm falling in love with you. I know it hasn't been that long, and it's out of the blue. Cause it feels like the right thing to do and Maybe somewhere down the road You'll feel it too But I don't want to scare you away Cause I love being near you I want you to stay And because of all of the things that you do I think I'm falling in love with you I'm just too old to be playing the game But my heart still skips a beat at the mention of your name So I wrote you this simple refrain That one day I might sing for you It will explain that I'm an uncomplicated man Cause I think we can make it I hope that we can and you know without you my heart feels so blue I think
think I'm falling in love with you Maybe I fall too easy I've heard it said before Don't want this love to leave me Only just open the door We can sail the stormy seas If you'll grow Maybe I fall too easy I've heard it said before Don't want this love to leave me Only just open the door We could sail the stormy seas If you'll grow with me Well I think I'm Too. But I don't want to scare you away Cause I love being near you I want you to stay And you know without you my heart feels so blue And because of all of the things that you do So I'm here with Sam Redley from the Resna. Oh. I know you just told me to call you Red, but I that's all right. Yeah, call me whatever you want. <laughs> um, so I have a few questions. But you guys have done really well recently, doing really well with BBC, with introducing. Thank you. Doing well with Hugh Stevens. Question: Dream collaboration. Who would you want to work with? I quite like. I don't know why, but I think I'd really like to work with someone like Slay I know it's a bit like because <laughs> of some of the bits that have happened, but. I just like his collaborator. He's the best like collabing artist at the moment, in my opinion. My like ultimate collaboration has got to be. I've always wanted to feature on a Chase and Status track. Oh, yeah. I've been absolutely. It's a bit, you know, it's not quite indie territory, but I've been like a hardcore fan since I was about eight years old. So that yeah. for me would be. It'd be up there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Sweet. What has been your favourite live show? So in terms of something you've played that you've just loved. Got to be here, innit? Yeah, I, th I think as we're here in Old Bakery, um, <laughs> we started here on the 22nd of April 2017, was our first show. <laughs> that was in April. That was Jose's, our drummer's birthday, and uh, Truro College and Old Bakery worked together to bring a new act on to support. We supported the Velvet Hands here, and it was our first show, and that put us in front of um, you know, festival organisers like you know uh, Liam Jolly, uh, Kate Barnes, and uh, you know people from Leo Palooza and Great Estate, and that sort of put our foot in the door. So to go from that to then doing like the sold out shows where everyone's going nutty on on the dance floor, it's 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 nice to see that we've made some sort of progress. Yeah, you definitely the have. Past three years. What has been your like inspiration for your visuals? Because like Mickey's got a really strong, the video for Mickey is super strong and all of the artwork has a really cohesive like theme. But I wondered if that came from somewhere like in particular. It sort of turned into like a gritty street life vibe. Um, you know, the whole like skateboarding at night in car parks type thing, which is actually where the original Mickey shot came from. She nice. was skateboarding in a car park in Lou. Um, 
But no, we, we wanted to create a theme for singles, as a lot of artists do, and, and that's just sort of what came out of the, the woodworm, really. But I think now that these set of singles are done, we're going to approach like the new year with sort of newer material, and I think we are going to go for a bit of a design change, so... Sweet. All to be revealed. Is isolation yeah. meant that you've done a lot of writing, and that's kind of the way that you're funneling into the new year? Yeah, I could say, i say we did in the first lockdown. Yeah, in the first lockdown, got a lot done. Um, Still haven't really had time to go over them all. It's just been a pretty mad year for all of us, so just trying to get through them all. We've got about 10 songs in the bank to get through, haven't we? Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, we um, are definitely, we're working on the songs we wrote in lo the first lockdown, and now the songs we are sort of putting together as a band right now, so that will hopefully be what everyone can look out for. And I've heard that you have a tattoo that links to a, a quite famous band. Yeah. Is there any, the one. any yeah. particular <laughs> reason for it? I do have a tattoo, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, I became, I go through this thing where if I find a new band and I love their music and it doesn't very happen, happen very often, um, I go a bit obsessed. I think a lot of people became obsessed with sports team and it's funny because at the time I thought it was going to be a class idea, but then I didn't. It sort of um, makes me look incredibly, what's the word? Sad. Desperate, yeah, <laughs> and sad. Um, so, but yeah, I have got, I don't know where the camera is, which one I should be facing into. Oh, don't into show me your grubby socks. Yeah, I've got my nice hairy Stay legs. Those. Yeah, I have, you can see it through the hair, the sports oh, yeah. theme tattoo. Um, they, they did see it and it did achieve me guest list for life. That's, that's pretty sweet. I didn't get it. Whether I'll get that or not, I don't know. But uh, whether um, I didn't get it just to get guest list. I was obsessed with them at the time. I loved the design someone had created for one of their posters. Um, and I was going for a breakup. So what are you doing a breakup? Just going get a tattoo, yeah. I guess. So I went, I went and got it done, and I put it in on their um, community like page on on Facebook, and it just sort of blew up. And then they sort of got in touch. So I decided I'd whack their name on there as well. And Still no support slot, but it's, it's <laughs> what we right. hope. Yeah, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> We're gonna slow things down a bit now. This one's called Reasons Out of Ten. What do you see after life? Is there more than me? What's there to do when the whole world is stops for you? Cause I could count a million. See you after life, this is my
My name's Dan Cole and I'm a painter of birds and abstract landscapes. I first moved into the old bakery, I think it'll be 11 years in this November, coming November. I've seen a lot of changes, it's a lot more civilised than, uh, than it used to be, but uh, this is my original studio and I just, I still love it, I still absolutely love it. I began working professionally in 1988 after I left college after doing an illustration degree, but I've always drawn since I was a kid basically. I was always a kid at school who could draw and so this is where I've ended up and uh, I'm very happy I have done. <laughs> what I love about creating, I, well I think the fact that you can come in with a and stand in front of a blank canvas and by the end of the day you've made something which wasn't there before and it's a matter of solving problems and getting excited, chasing avenues which might end up as something or it might be just a blind alley. Um, but you don't, every day is different and, 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 you, and it's down to you basically, so I, I love that about it. I think literally going outside and, and seeing stuff is, is, is you know, the most basic um, and having a desire to, re to kind of record that but then bring it back to the studio and then tell a story with it or make it into something that isn't literal that takes on a life of its own and that uh, yeah that inspires me it's, uh, um, and there's obviously there's 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 lots of artists whose work you look at it's fantastic that, you know you don't want to emulate but you just appreciate their kind of eye and their way of looking at uh, looking at things I did an exhibition a couple of years ago in Truro Museum, which was all square bird paintings, and I think I did 47, and they're all arranged at two lines. Um, it was in the museum, which was which was really nice. But I think it's always the latest project that you're working on. It's kind of I'm working on some really stripped back landscape, so that to me is really exciting and, and a new kind of direction for my work for the moment. So so yeah, that's uh, I'm quite excited about that. You can find my work at Pinkfoot Gallery up in Norfolk as, as a gallery I've shown with for a very long time. Um, I show in St Maud's and Varian Gallery, Mid Cornwall. I show on the Isles of Scilly, um, Bills and Ryan Harrogate um, and Cambridge Contemporary um, in, in Cambridge. And then I have a show once a year, a mixed show with other wildlife artists in, in the Mal Galleries in, in London. So, so, so yeah, that's where you can find me. And we're now back with another blinding performance from the wonderfully talented Bailey Tomkinson. We're talking over tequila again he shows me his tattoos Was talking about his ex-girlfriend I'm sick and tired of all of this All these boys want just one thing And I'm not like that Big breath picking you up And I'll come along if I can see in the front He's got dark girly hair Growing a mustache And if you walk home I'd be fine with that I need a man Need my jeans Not a boy on a football team
now here with Helm de Vegas. He's been doing some really amazing things during lockdown. He's done a hundred live stream gigs. He's on about 102 now. And maybe 105. 105? Something, something like that. that. He's I raised over count. 600 pounds for charity. Um, and he's gonna to chat to me a little bit about what he's been up to, so hello. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? Oh, it's good to be here. It's nice to be outside. I know it is, isn't it? And it's yeah. nice to be in a music venue again yeah, as well. Sure. Yeah, for sure. I love this place anyway. It's such a, a good local. Scene. In terms of your gigging scene, you started doing your live stream gigs during lockdown. Yeah. Um, was there any particular reason? Uh, it was, uh, I just got back from my honeymoon and Kenny Rogers passed away and my wife said to me, why don't you play a few songs for Kenny Rogers? So I played like four or five, I think, songs for that, for that night. And um, I think the show was like 20 minutes long or something like that. And it's just kind of spiraled out of control from there. <laughs> Amazing. At least it's given you something to do. Yeah, oh, yeah it's kept me sane, I think. <laughs> I assume this response has been pretty good for oh, It's been amazing. It's been amazing. Um, I, people that I don't know, there are plenty of people that I do know that come and watch, but there are plenty of people that I don't know that have just become sort of part. We've built a little community of people. Um, and it's not just about coming to listen to the music, it's also about getting together with people that may be on their own and stuff in different parts of the country during lockdown, especially yeah. during that time. Uh, Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's, people are so nice. People are so nice. In terms of like actual gigs, yeah. when, when those still existed, where is one of your favourite places to play in Cornwall? Where have you enjoyed playing the most? I, I, here is certainly one of the old bakeries. This That's is becoming one. a recurring theme. Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> I was fortunate enough to support um, Ron Block and Damien O'Kane when they played here the last time. Uh, so this is one of the best music venues, I think, certainly. Uh, in the county. Um, what inspires you to write your own music? What's kind of the funnel from that? <sighs> um, I've always played. It's, it's just something I, uh, that I've always done. And I think that my sort of coping mechanism for everything is to write. And, and so I think a musician's best friend is pain and torment and torture. And, and I think that's where some of my best material comes from. <laughs> yeah. It's just one of those facts of life. You know, you're either writing about, it's, oh, I'm so happy, or oh, I'm so upset. And I think that's great. Yeah, it's a good vehicle to exercise my demons. Amazing. So if the viewers are watching this and they think you're interesting and want to pay attention to your live streams, where can they find you? I'm on Facebook is where I uh, mainly stream so they can go to my page, which is just Helm de Vegas. You can search me on, uh, on Facebook and find me there.
bakery in Truro highlights some of the huge amount of talent that we have here residing in Cornwall. From arts to theatre to comedy to performances, we literally have everything within this building. If you make sure to follow us on social media here at the Old Bakery, you'll be able to keep up with all of the updates that we will be posting over there. Now back to favourites of BBC introducing star Sarah Gosling, the Resna. <laughs> One thing is for certain, hey, our palms have grip real tight. As the icon takes to the stage, the happiness begins to rage. I know we've been waiting a while, and I'll show you how to smile. Hold on to the end of the night. The sweat's dripping from your hair Just remember that nobody cares And to what it is all the rest Well, I promise I'll try not 